Today, our objectives are to define specific latent heat and to calculate the specific latent heat of fusion and of vaporization. So, first off, specific latent heat is the amount of heat energy required to change the state or phase of one kilogram of an object or substance at constant temperature. It is important to note that whenever something changes state or phase, going from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, it always happens at a constant temperature. So, for example, when ice turns into water, when it melts, it happens at zero degrees Celsius. The temperature of the ice isn't increasing, the temperature of the water isn't increasing when that is occurring. So our formula for specific latent heat is E sub H is equal to ML sub V or E sub H is equal to ML sub F, where we know EH is the heat energy measured in joules, M is the mass measured in kilograms, and LF is the specific latent heat of fusion measured in joules per kilogram, and L sub V is the specific latent heat of vaporization also measured in joules per kilogram. Why is it that we have an LF and an LV? Well, it's just to distinguish between fusion and vaporization. Basically, it's just one formula, E equals ML. But what is the difference between fusion and vaporization, you may be asking? Well, it's this. When something goes from solid to liquid, that's called fusion or melting. When it goes from liquid to solid, solid that's called freezing. Some people also call it solidification. When you go from liquid to gas, that is vaporization. And from gas to liquid, that is condensation. If you go directly from solid to gas, that's called sublimation. And directly from gas to solid, that's deposition. So let's look at an example. How much heat energy does it take to melt 25 grams of ice? Given that the specific latent heat of fusion of ice is 334,000 joules per kilogram. So we start by identifying our givens. And in this case, we need to convert from grams to kilograms. Our value stated for the specific latent heat of fusion, we put that down. And then we write our formula. So we substitute. 0 0.025 kilograms multiplied by 334,000 joules per kilogram and that would give you 8,350 joules. So if you understood, practice on this problem, pause the video here and when you're ready to continue, you unpause and the video will continue in 3, 2, 1. This is the solution. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I also think you'll enjoy these other videos here as well. Have a good day.